Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. In previous videos, we were looking at the Siemens Industrial IoT 2020. We looked at what hardware was involved and a little bit of an overview that was shown at the Maker Fair in Italy just the other day. What we want to do now uh, is anybody that's bought one of these or is planning on buying one will need to know how to get a hold of the firmware and how to flash the SD card that will be fitted inside it. So what I'm going to do right now is go through that process with you and provide the links to where you're going to get the firmware and any tools that will help you do the programming. So the first thing you need to do obviously is buy an IoT 2020. That's what you're going to do. And here is a link on the UK RS website where you could start this. Now if you're in a different region, obviously you will use your appropriate region. So whether that be uh, Italy or you know, Spain, uh, UK in this case, which is what I've got. Anyway, once you've got your unit, you're going to be able to want to download the firmware for it. Um, on the site at RS directly, there is links to a data sheet and a quick installation guide, as well as statements of conformity for CL, UL, etc. So the guides, uh, these are them, I've just opened them up here so that you can see. This is the product data sheet that describes what's inside the box basically. Anyway, so you can see here the basic um, hardware specs. I did do a separate video that describes all of this, so I'm not going to repeat it. But what I will tell you is that you need to get a 32 gig or you can get an 8 gig one. It will work with that too. I'm not sure about a 4 gig. Probably will, but you would probably run out of room fairly quickly. Um, the other manual is the quick install guide, which basically describes uh, operating temperature ranges, how you can install an Arduino shield, um, it's installing a battery for the real-time clock. Uh, in this case, it's showing you disconnecting, but you can also add one to this unit um, to add battery backup for your real-time clock, uh, showing you how to take the unit out so that you can put a PCI Express Wi-Fi adapter in the back of it, and I will be making videos to show you all of these things as well. Adding 24 volts, uh, connecting a supply. Now this can be anything from 9 to 36 as it says there. So the first thing you need to do is go to the uh, Siemens website and go to the support page. Uh, here it is. Now we'll provide the links to this. And in here you'll see um, under Semantic IoT 2000, you will see links to where you can get the firmware from. In this case, latest SD card example image. And I have this on the next tab here. So there's an example image. There's also a whole bunch of open source software that you can download and a readme file. So what you want is this first one with the example image. Once you've downloaded that, so you basically just click on it. Um, you have to log in, of course, and... Uh, then once you've logged in, you can download the file. Agree, next. Um, you have to provide your information, of course. Accept a few conditions, click next. Yeah. One, two, one or two too many steps in my opinion for this, but that's fine. There's nothing complicated here. And then you will start downloading the image file. Now I'm going to just cancel this right now because I already have downloaded it. So once that's downloaded, you also need to get a copy of Win32 Disk Imager. You can download it from SourceForge.net or wherever you prefer to get it. If you already have it, then great. Once you have done that, then you need to burn it to an SD card. So I'm just going to quickly show you that. So let me just fire up my Win32 Disk Imager. Okay, here we have it. So in my case, I haven't put an SD card in here yet. Let me just go grab one. Um, the one I'm using is actually SanDisk Ultra 32 gig, and uh, that's what it looks like, and that's exactly the one that I have right now. So RS Components will be offering, um, or do offer, suitable SD cards for use with the IoT 2020. Let's get back to Win32 Disk Imager. I'm just going to plug this into my Flash Writer. I, ha I have a Transend USB 3 uh, multiport writer here, so I will be able to pick disk G, which is the one that um, it uses. Let me just verify that on my files here. So it should have come up with um, G, which is this one right here. That's what I just plugged in. 
So you need to go and navigate to where you've put your image. So in my case, I have put it on uh, the root of my K drive. And the default for Win32 Disk Imager is a .img, and that is not what is in uh, these zip files. What they do when you expand them is they have a .wic extension. So you have to change it to startup star, pick the um, WIC extension, and click right one, just confirming you've got the right disk. It will ask if you want to confirm that you want to do that. Say yes. Now, because I've got a um, Ultra Sand Disk, as you can see, it's writing pretty quickly, which is why I like using the uh, better quality SD cards. And the next step would be to uh, plug it into your IoT 2020. So let's just exit from there, and I will bring up. Where I'll show you where you have to add it. So obviously this is the uh, front view of the IoT 2020 and on the right side here there is a flap that you can flip up here to get access to inside. Once you open up the inside then this is what you'll see. I've also removed the left hand panel here as well just for uh, convenience of seeing everything and what you can see right here is the SD card socket. Now this will just slide toward me a little bit and then it will actually hinge up. You just lay the card inside, fold it back down and push it towards the back to lock it in place. Um, I'm also showing you here a picture of how the TTL serial port will connect because it's actually handy to watch what's going on when this boots up for the first time. This is a closer up view of that connector so you can see which pins are being used. Um, there are an RTS and a CTS on two of these pins as well, but they're not necessary. So if you have a five pin FTDI lead, you can get one from RS Components and I will provide a link to it. I happen to have one already, which is just a three pin version. And you can see here, we've got a ground, a transmit and a receive. And that's all you need to connect to this thing. Once you've put your SD card in and connected your TTL serial port to this. Now you don't actually have to do this. I just like to have it there so that I can see what's going on. And I wanted to be able to show you what I'm doing as well. And it allows you to uh, do a little bit of configuration because it will come up once it's booted into Linux with the full um, console so that you're actually talking at the Linux level. It's not just a little bit of diagnostics information. The IP address when the IoT 2020 starts up is a 192.168.200.1. It's a static IP address so you will need to either reconfigure your PC to talk to it to that network permanently or you can just go in and modify the interfaces file under networks at C etc slash networks from the root folder uh, to use a DACP or to change the static configuration. And we'll have a little look at that once we booted this up just so that I can show you how to get it up and running. Okay, so we have the SD card plugged in. We have the COM FTDI cable plugged in. We have a network connection plugged in on the uh, hardwired Ethernet port, the 10100 port. And I'm just about to connect my 12 volt power supply. Um, turn it on now. So let's see what happens as this boots up. We should get something on the uh, COM port. There we go, serial number. And we get, because it's seen the SD card, we're going to start now seeing it boot. You can go into a boot menu here, but you just need to leave it alone and it will start booting um, any second from the SD card. So this is using a sample image. You can actually create your own images as well using an Ubuntu PC or um, something like that and cross compiling using the standard tools and everything to make a Yocto Linux um, image that you can put onto an SD card yourself. Now, by doing that you can obviously build in as many libraries and functionality or not as you wish. Uh, the one I'm using is the sample one that comes from Siemens directly. So um, we will see what we have in here. Okay, that's now finished booting. You log in, by the way, with just the username root. There is no password by default for this. If you do an ifconfig, 
we should see the uh, Ethernet port sitting on 200.1. Uh, so what you need to do is um, you can either do it from here using VI, and I really am not a fan of VI to be honest, but in Etsy slash network, there is a file which is called interfaces right here. And if you, um, you'll see the way this is configured, you've got automatic um, loopback setup, and then you've got the wide interface. Um, we've got Ethernet 0 set with a static IP address and Ethernet 1 set with DHCP. Now this is because this image is also suitable for the IoT 2020 and the 2040. And the 2040 has two Ethernet ports on, so they've set the first one to be static and the second one to be DHCP. What I like is to just reconfigure this to use DHCP for uh, both and normally to do that I will simply flip my PC into um, a different IP address just to get this thing working so if you go into your network uh, pick your network port and go into properties change the IPv4 and I just pick you know a random number that's not dot one because the card is uh, the IoT 2020 is in dot uh, one. Make sure you've got a subnet. You don't need a default gateway or anything. Just say OK, OK. Uh, you don't need to go close this. We'll need this again in a moment to put it back. Um, now we should be able to use um, WinSCP. Um, it, it gives me access to a much nicer editor and things like that. So I already have one configured here for 168.200.1. So we'll just log in with that and it'll bring up another SSH session. So this is because it's brand new, it's giving me a warning. So I just say yes. And I want to be in Etsy network. I just refresh that. And there's the file. So we're in the root etc slash network. And if we go and double click on network, now we can edit this using a nice friendly notepad type of interface. So what I do for these boards is I simply completely remove the uh, fixed one. Now you can set this up whatever way you want for your environment, of course. And I just change these to be uh, Ethernet 0. And then that's pretty much it. So I just save this. Um, close the file and now I can actually just simply go in here and I can reboot I don't actually have to reboot actually I can just do if if down eth0 and that'll shut it down and then I can do um, if up eth0 bring it back up again and now it should um, pick up on the new IP address and if I do IF config now, it should have a 1.230. So there we go. We've got a brand new IP address for this unit. And it's now on in the range of my network card. Now, I'm not going to be able to connect to that yet um, because my network settings is still not correct, of course. So I need to go back into that file. Uh, go back into properties for my network, go back to the IPv4 setting, set that back to DHCP, OK, OK, close that. Um, that's now failed because it's no longer sitting on that port. And I can create a new connection for WinSCP. Um, and we'll save this as, we'll leave it at that. And now we hit login. Now we should get connected now with the new network. And because it's changed, it thinks it's a new device. Um, so there we are. There's all the files at the root directory. And in here, we are now up and running on the network, on my local network. So that's pretty much all there is to getting the IoT firmware up and running and getting your basic network connectivity um, set up. Okay, so now we have the board up and running. As you can see, we can look at the drive. We're happily connecting to it via a um, TTL serial port. And we're also able to SSH into it using 
uh, WinSCP in this case. Of course, you can use whatever tools you like based on what you have and what you're used to. Um, but I just wanted to show you how easy it was to upload the SD card image. Uh, sorry, show how easy it is to download the SD card image, put it onto the SD card using Win32 Disk Imager, um, drop it into the IoT 2020 power up, and do a simple reconfiguration of the um, Ethernet port to get it up and running on your local network. So that is all I'm going to show you in this video. In the next video I will show you how to get an Arduino sketch up and running on this. Maybe demonstrate Blink and a couple of other standard sketches just to show you that they will run right off the bat on these IoT 2020s quite easily and therefore give you an easy migration for your existing code. In a subsequent video beyond that I will also show you how to install Node-RED with um, MQTT and SQLite 3 so that you could set up a more um, industrial-like IoT gateway. Of course, when you're running Arduino sketches and things, you're using this more of an edge device than a gateway. Uh, running devices like M uh, MQTT and Node-RED, um, which then allows you to run additional protocols like uh, Modbus or uh, any TCP IP protocols and things quite easily, then that really starts to demonstrate the uh, use of the IoT 2020 as a um, industrial Internet of Things gateway. So that will be in future videos, but for now this is the end of this one. Hope you liked it, hope you find it useful, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks, bye.